back to my channel. It's me, Chitty, and today we're doing storytelling. The last time I did one, it was called The Rainbow Fish. But today we're doing an awesome story, which is really funny, really crazy, and also made everyone laugh. And I'll tell you something else about the story. It has so much rhyming words. So the story is The Smartest Giant in Town by Julia Donaldson. This is really crazy and funny. You guys think that a giant might be scary or evil, but in this story, the giant is the main character and he's so good. And he's also so crazy and funny. And in the story, I told you there are rhyming words. Many kids might learn these rhyming words by the story. And if there is one rhyming word coming up, I'll be telling it. Let's go on to the story now. George was a giant. The scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same pair of, I mean, and the same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. So look at the first line and the third line. A town and gown, they rhyme. So there's George right over there. And... There are so much people looking at him, like many people. And oh my god, there are so much animals as well. There's a cat beside the water fountain. There's a mouse drawing on the wall. There's a rabbit sitting sitting somewhere over there. And two giants are over there by the house over there. Let's move on to the next page. And that's George. But one day, George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought... Okay, so this is the shop, and this is that one man stitching up a sock. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a stripy, sh uh, a smart stripy sh tie, some smart socks with diamonds up the side, and a pair of smart shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. But should I say something? The smartest giant in town in this story actually means like a person who looks really smart, not the wise person. Let's move on. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home, when he, but when he heard a sound. On a payment stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. Giraffe and the scarf are rhyming. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his stripy tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wounded round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. Tie and he rhyme. So that's the giraffe with the scarf. George strode towards home. He said to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. There are more songs that he sings like this. And scarf and giraffe rhyme down in town rhyme. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept, it kept untucking anyway, he said, as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on. Singing to himself, my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, my shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat, but look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. Oh my god, George, where is your shirt? You're just putting your like inner shirt. And he's walking and I see a car over there. I hope he doesn't bump into it. George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? asked George. Oh no, I think the house broke or burned down. Oh my god, that's lots of children, Mrs. Mouse. That's his legs, George's legs. See how tall it is? 
It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. Knew it, it burned down. So sad though. All of those children, I'm so glad they made it alive. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shoes. His shiny shoes, that is. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. Oh, now this is the happiest ending I ever saw. Oh my God, they're playing with the shoelace, those two mice, the yellow colored, like the girl with the yellow dress and the boy who's climbing on it. There's a butterfly. So let's go on to the next page. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. As he hopped, he said to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a girl. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down, I'm the smallest giant in town. Boat and girl rhyme, scarf and giraffe rhyme, uh, like house and mouse rhyme, and up, I mean down and town rhyme. George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the side. It was tickling my toes anyway. Wow, he said as the fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. Yay. George hopped on uh, hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My house is a my shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. Now he ha he has to hop really like um he has to hop even the mouse time, but he could put his leg down in the mouse time because he had socks, but this he has nothing for one of his shoes. So it's gonna take even longer to reach his house now. There's a little girl over there holding a frog. Let's go to the next page. George came to a big squirkly bog. Besides the bog stood a dog. Bog and dog, they rhyme. Who's howling? What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I kept on getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a dry, safe path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was squashing my tummy anyway. Not really that comfortable, he said as he laid it down. He laid it down over the bog and made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. It could even be a bridge, not just a path. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog, but... So fox and socks rhyme, bog and dog rhyme. But my trousers are falling down, and I'm the coldest giant in town. Town and down rhyme. Suddenly, George felt sad and shivering, and not all smart. He stood on one foot and thought i have to go back to the shop and buy more clothes he decided he turned round and hopped all the way back to the shop oh my god his trousers fell down now he's in his underwear gross but when he got there it was closed what a tragedy he helped so much animals and this is what he gets not fair oh no cried george he said sat down and into the doorstep and the tear ran down his nose he felt as sad as all those animals he had met on his way home he never reached his house 
Then, out of a corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. I think it's his clothes because those are the only things familiar. And look at him so sad in the corner. And there's two birds on top of the roof. I didn't see that, that then. My, he, George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled. My dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully com uh, comfortable. Now I'm the coziest giant in town as he danced. Back home along the road. Outside his front doors to the small, all the small animals that he had out, even the big animal, the giraffe. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said. Open it. George untied the river. Inside the beautiful gold paper, there was a beautiful gold papered crown and a card. Look inside the card. George, said the animals, George put on the crown and on his head and opened the card. Before I say what's in the card, we're going to look at how pretty he is. Like, he looks a bit like a girl with the dresses and the sandals and all those little and big, large. Oh my God, there are so much animals there. And let's go to the next page, the last page. I'll tell you what's in the card. Your tie is a scarf for a cool giraffe. Your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for the little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a pond. So here's a very fine crown to go with the sandals and the gown of the kindest giant in town. So crown, gown, and town rhyme. And the others you know. It looks so pretty. Like, it's not that pretty as the actual draw thing. But it looks pretty enough. Look at the things. Like, look at the animals over there. And look how George helped them. And now he got something amazing. So this is the end of the story. I hope you all love this story. For much more things, like much more stories and books and everything, please subscribe, hit the bell, and don't forget to click the smashing, smashing like button. And I'll see you all next time. Only if you subscribe. Yay.